remember that these videos assume that you've just completed Nikot's quests. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason to do the guild hall before completing the village quests is for a challenge, or if you're playing multiplayer. This is not the only way to beat Bunganga, of course, it's just meant to give an example of how to get past this quest relatively painlessly. You need one slot to get these skills to work. I'd highly recommend upgrading to the high Sandman Spike, but you can work with something else if you don't want to hunt Plesioths. The strategy here is very similar to the final invitation, but we're not trapping and capping them this time. You want to keep up the pressure and attack as much as possible to build up the sleep status ailment, but also be ready to stop attacking as soon as possible at any time. If you keep attacking it as it starts falling asleep, he'll wake up. Be very careful. Also, when put to sleep, Langanga will remain sleeping for 40 seconds. You have that time to plant bombs and explode them. Doesn't really matter where you put the bombs, maybe the tail since it doesn't require a fire element to break, the damage will be the same anywhere on his body. As always, Langanga can jump around quite a bit. You might get lucky sometimes if he decides to use the frost breath and or slam attacks, since you might be able to avoid them and get some hits in. Just be careful to not get frozen or crushed. Earplugs make this fight a lot simpler. Being able to move around and attack while they roar is really nice, even if they don't roar too terribly often. Auto tracker isn't necessary, but it's pretty useful and you can fit it in, so why not? Being able to know where the monsters are and not having to paintball them all the time, especially since Blangaga will clean paintballs off, he did it pretty regularly in my test hunts, is just super nice. Bomber, of course, is a very important skill for this strategy. It will increase bomb damage and make bomb crafting always successful. It's great stuff. Be sure to use flash bombs and or leave the area when you need to sharpen and heal. When enraged, Blanganga is pretty fast and very aggressive. Of course, flash bombing can sometimes be easier said than done. Either wait for a good enough opening, or try to make your way to an area transition or wait out his rage mode so he gets slower. Of course, just because he's flashed doesn't mean you can't get hit. Do your best not to stand in places where he can still hit you. Don't assume he'll miss just because he's been blinded. Sometimes monsters will do just the right moves to kill you. I'd recommend crafting bombs after planting. You have time to do it now and it's safe, and you won't have to rush to craft new ones once you put them to sleep again. You should only have to sleep bomb each Blanganga two times and then hit them a few times to kill them. If they both go into one area, it could be pretty annoying. Just wait for them to separate. Remember, with Auto Tracker, if monsters on your map are red, they're aggressive. If they're blue, they're passive. Try and go in as one leaves to get the attention of the one that's still in the area. Or they might just both leave to the same area and you'll just have to wait again. Neither Blanganga in this quest seem to summon Blangos. I'm not sure why, but it sure simplifies the quest quite a bit.
Remember that when dying, Blanganga will still do one last attack. Don't get hit by it. You will take damage since the quest isn't over until you take out both. Monsters in the guild hall have higher health values than the one from the village quests. Bring your best equipment and items. Come prepared to win or be prepared to try again. Stick with it. You've got a long road of success ahead of you. Thank you.